After being sacked from Manchester United, many people said that Jose Mourinho was past it. He was finished. Well, I'm not inclined to believe it. So here is how Jose Mourinho has changed Spurs and why I think they're contenders for a few trophies this season. So first off, and Jose has done something which has always, always been very, very difficult for Tottenham to understand. Defend properly. Away with the stupid goals, away with a lack of clean sheets and having the defensive stability heading into the important games. Now, yes, there's always something a little bit spursy about the odd game here and there, especially when they're giving away last minute goals. But on the whole, Mourinho has managed to change that since coming into Spurs. A big part of this has been settling with a back four. Under Mauricio Pochettino, the back four often changed quite a little bit, especially towards the end, as players were constantly being rotated in and out of the side, especially in the fullback areas. Now, with the signing of Sergio Reguilón in the summer, Eric Dyer being moved to centre back full time, Jan Vertonghen leaving the club, and Toby Alderweireld still in very, very good form, it looks like the majority of the back line is a rather settled team. They won't be switching from a three to a five, it stays the back four, and that way Hugo Lloris as well knows what's working in front of him. The only position for Spurs that is up for a little bit of debate is Serge Aurier and Matt Doherty on that right hand side of the defence. But since Mourinho has come in, Serge Aurier has been doing a fantastic job and looks to be, I say, for the majority, rid of all those mistakes that plagued him within the last few years. It's evident with the start of the season when you look at the fact that Spurs have conceded the least amount of goals in the Premier League whilst filming this and have kept three clean sheets in a row against the likes of Manchester City, Arsenal and Chelsea that definitely the defensive side of their game has improved. And actually, talking of that decision that Mourinho has to make at right back, squad depth is another reason why Spurs are really looking good on all four fronts. Now, I'm not saying Spurs are going to win the title or they're going to win the quadruple or even the treble, but surely, surely at least one trophy can come from having such a good squad with so much depth. I mean, if you look at the defence, yes, there's still Damas and Sanchez there as well, along with the players that I've just mentioned. Both Ben Davis and Reguillon are doing well at left back and Javit Tanganga looks to be coming through in a really promising way. In the midfield, despite the fact that Deli Alli's pretty much been kicked out of the squad. Harry Winks doesn't get much game time. There's still a lot of players left who are not only competing on the weekend in the Premier League, but then Jose is able to swap the whole side out pretty much when it comes to the Europa League games on the Thursday. This gives more time to the likes of Moussa Sissoko, to Harry Winks, Ali as well. The Celso and Ndombele are swapping every few games. Moving further forward, there's Lucas, Bergwijn, Son, Lamella, who always seems to be injured, and most importantly, what Spurs have been crying out for is a backup striker for Harry Kane. When Kane's fit, there's no doubt he can fire Tottenham to all sorts of success. It's just in the last few years, there's always been at least one, if not two periods, where Kane's been injured. As soon as that happens, they're relying on someone like Hyun Min Sun to come up with the goals, which he tries his best on occasion, but you're never quite replicating the amount that Harry Kane scores. So going out and bringing Carlos Vinicius on loan from Benfica in the summer has been an absolute masterstroke. He started well. He's only started Europa League games so far, but they've been very, very promising, not only with his goals and with his assists, but with his overall contribution to how the team plays. I think this has always been something very, very difficult for Spurs to manage. As I say, replacing Kane is difficult enough. Finding someone who's happy to sit on the bench until Kane gets injured is also very difficult. But when he goes out of the team, it's always tough to find someone who's going to come in and replace his style of play so that you don't have to change the team so much. When the likes of Fernando Llorente came into the squad, it often reduced Spurs to more of a long ball, more direct team, hoping that the target man would then bring knockdowns to bring the others into play. And talking of attackers, another reason why I think Spurs and Jose will be successful this season is because he is managing to get the best out of Hyung Min Son and Harry Kane. Is there a deadlier attacking duo in world football at the moment? Now, when Jose first came into the club, there was talk of, ah, is his defensive style of football really going to complement Kane? Is Kane really going to take a step to the next level? My God, you betcha. He has been this season better, probably, than he ever has in a Tottenham shirt, and it's due to Mourinho's tactics. He is very, very well drilled. From the defence to the midfield, there is often a low block. They soak up a lot of pressure and hit on the counter-attack. This has complemented Kane's ability as a frontman and especially shown off his range of passing. When it comes to the others up front, the likes of Son, Bergwijn and Lucas, they've all got brilliant speed and are able to get in behind the front line. Kane and Son, as we've seen especially, providing so many goals for each other. 
The other forward in the front three is something that is really becoming a signature of Jose Mourinho, and it's a defensive forward. Especially with Steven Bergwijn and Lucas Moura, both of them have been complimented multiple times, especially Lucas, by Mourinho for their overall contribution to the team, their defensive work, and the fact that they are very much our team players. When the Spurs don't have possession, they, Bergwijn or Moura, are most likely the attacker who's going to drop back and create the second block after the defence into the midfield. It's this shape that they almost create a 4-4-2 system. Yes, one central midfielder is often dragged out wide and Hyung Min Sun does come back and defend, but not as much as he used to. He's in a much more free role to come in off the flanks and not only this, but go beyond Harry Kane. Instead of him being the focal point, he drops deep, Song goes further and Spurs are a really, really dangerous force against the top sides who like to press them. Of course, it's a little bit more difficult to break down some of the teams who don't necessarily attack. And when that happens, and when Spurs don't break them down, it can look like negative, boring football from Jose. But he knows what to do in these situations. He has managed plenty of teams to plenty of success. And the fact that you're seeing Kane and Son go forward and be such good attackers this season is only testament to Mourinho's tactics. And talking of the tactics, the last point that Jose has brought to the squad and why I definitely think at least one trophy will be coming to North London, the white half of North London this summer, as opposed to the red, is because of Jose's mentality. He has instilled in the squad this winner's mentality and it's something that unfortunately for Spurs has plagued their squad, the club and their management for so many years. For all the brilliant attacking football that they've managed to play and all the flair and all the times they've often pulled off something good or threatened to be in a title race or in the hunt for a trophy, their soft underbelly has been exposed. Whether it's being turned around at halftime, whether it's being thumped in an away game where you just know that they're coming up against a bogey team, they just can't help but having this mental block that they've stumbled over again and again and again. Mourinho has brought that to a new level. He's a winner. He's instilling it in the squad and he's brought in players like Pierre-Emile Hoybier, who has been phenomenal. His winning mentality in the middle of the park is something that embodies Jose Mourinho's on the side of the pitch and it looks like this Spurs squad are on to something new. When it comes to the title race, I'm not sure Spurs have got the legs. I think no, no matter how well Mourinho has done, like I've said in this video, and the tactics he's brought in, the mentality he's brought in, and what he's getting out of the players, sometimes, just sometimes, Spurs revert to their old self. Lloris has been fantastic since Jose came in, but there's always that one mistake in him. The same thing goes to Serge Aurier. There's always a little bit of a mistake. Harry Kane is always just one step away from an injury. These Spursy things from the past may end up rearing their ugly head and completely derailing a campaign like the title race over 38 matches. But when it comes to cup football, where you're in one knockout game, over two legs, or just in one tie, this is where I think Mourinho excels. In the course of just one match, if you're just in a final, like Spurs have been recently, especially the Champions League final, for me, there is no better manager to manage a one-off game like a knockout match or a final than Jose. When it comes to mentality, when it comes to the tactics and the preparation for that game, he absolutely knows how to win and his record in finals absolutely shows that as well. In fact, he was talking to Davinson Sanchez when he first joined the club and actually he was caught on video, admitted to the defender that he knew when they lined up in the tunnel, in the tunnel, sorry, his Manchester United side against Ajax in the Europa League, I think in 2017, he knew he'd won. Mourinho knew that United had won the game as they lined up in the tunnel and saw the Ajax body language. When he gets in the right mode, he can win any one-off game. And it's this that I think will help Spurs and eventually, after a long time, 12 years, bring a trophy to Tottenham. So there you have it. Feel free to come back to this video and let me know how Spurs are getting on at the end of the season. Either I'll be proved right or you can all have a right good laugh in the comments section. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on Spurs' chance of the season. Check out everything else you've got going on on OneFootball. And until next time, I will see you guys later.